You wanted it, you've got it. It's InfoWars Nightly News, the beginning of a true independent news network to challenge the phony left-right paradigm and the prostitutes that the establishment has bought on both sides of the political spectrum to control the population. It is so historical what we're doing here, and we couldn't do it without your support. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being supporters of PrisonPlanet.tv and InfoWarsNews.com and, of course, the weekday radio show from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., the news websites, InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. It is incredible that we're reaching tens of millions of people a week, and it's only growing. That's why the establishment from Al Gore to Glenn Beck on the left and the right are invading cyberspace and trying to bring a mainline version of what we do to the population. But if you look at the numbers at StatBrain or Google Analytics or Alexa, we are absolutely annihilating Glenn Beck and Al Gore on every single front. The people don't want the same old fake flavors of left-right. They want simple, common sense, basic, pro-human information. That's what you'll get here. We call it 1776 worldwide. Now, we've got quite a transmission lined up for you. Uh, many years ago, I had different cable networks and systems say, Alex, we want you to do a nightly news show. We'd pick it up. But I was so busy with a radio show that's also sent out via video on the web and making documentary films and writing books that I said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not ready for that. But now, here with some commentary at the start of the show, I just want to point out that I realized it's my responsibility to bring you unscripted but heavily researched teleprompter free news and information. And because we've reached so many people, it is our responsibility to go to the next level and we couldn't do it without you. So again, I want to thank all of you for spreading the word about PrisonPlanet.tv. Now, coming up tonight, we're going to talk to Dr. Sherry Tenpenny about the eugenics program. The U.S. government and other major governments adding sterilants to vaccines to carry out population reduction. We're going to look at Gardasil, the flu shot, the big Hollywood movies coming out to scare everybody into submission like Contagion with Matt Damon and others. That's coming up. And then excerpts an interview I did with Hollywood and TV legend Ed Asner on Building 7 and the controlled demolition that was the 9-11 attacks. That is coming up later in this transmission. But first, let's go ahead and get into the economy. Kurt Nemo on Monday wrote an article saying that Ben Bernanke was going to announce basically QE3 through this new twist program. And uh, Kurt, by reaching uh, and, and researching IMF and World Bank documents, was able to predict that it would be called uh, twist or basically going back to an early 1960s program to manipulate the bond market. And the stock market responded today by plunging by 391 points, or technically 400 points. Uh, the global markets also tumbled by 4%. And Zolik, the head of the World Bank, said that the world is now in the danger zone. And uh, the grand poobah of globalism, George Soros, who said during the 2008 crisis that he was having a great crisis fleecing governments and the general population with his insider knowledge, has now told us that we're already in a double-dip recession. Well, every economist I've talked to has documented that we never left the recession, and a recession for more than a year with the type of job losses we've had is really a depression. So we've been in a depression now for more than three years. So we don't need that uh, Nazi sympathizer and supporter who sold out his own people, George Soros, to tell us that we are in a recession. Uh, continuing, uh, obviously, his stocks ended down lower. And why is all of this? Well, Moody's yesterday downgraded big banks on changes of policy downgraded Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, and others. So the system downgraded itself as an attempt to panic the public. The head of the IMF, 
based out of France came out and said yesterday, unless there's more hyperinflationary moves in QE3, that the world would basically go into a depression. Now, the very same banksters did this in 2008. Back in October, they said, give us unlimited trillions in taxpayer money or there'll be a depression. And then every few years, they run the same scam over and over again. And again, here is this uh, article uh, by Kurt Nemo that came out a few days ago dealing with this. And Kurt wrote another article, um, Operation Twist and Shout, Fed Launches Stealth Attack on Pensions. And he breaks down how QE3 and this new uh, long-term U.S. Treasury bond uh, will actually destroy uh, the value of U.S. pensions, including the government pension system known as Social Security. Peter Schiff, who I interviewed today on the radio, uh, told MSNBC today, and we have the article up at Infowars.com, that the Fed will turn to QE3 and failed bid to prevent economic depression. And that's basically um, what this twist will do by pushing people into long-term bonds that will induce banks to loan out more money, which will cause inflation, which is another form of QE3. Continuing with this news, there's a big census report out that recession is taking a major toll on young adults and that there is massive uh, unemployment uh, in the youth population, much higher than it is uh, in other groups. So that's basically it with the economic news. Um, we're seeing the private banking cartel tell the Europeans that either you give up all national sovereignty that's left to the IMF and World Bank and allow a financial dictatorship to be established, or you're going to basically face total economic implosion. The problem is every time you give in to these terroristic financial threats, you are simply incrementally brought into greater levels of economic bondage and depression. Best to go ahead and write off the 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives that have been created and uh, destroy the globalist bankers, no matter how painful it is, and then rebuild from that point because the path we're being taken down is clearly rack and ruin and leads us into a Weimar Republic type scenario with a global government, a private global government run by the banksters. Now, getting into other news, I know Aaron Dyke sitting in for me uh, Monday night on InfoWars Nightly News broke this down. And since then, we've uh, sent out Darren McBreen and Rob Jacobson to file a report uh, with uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly here in Austin. Some people are aware of this is a police state power grab. Others are willing to give up their liberty for security. But, of course, Benjamin Franklin pointed out you'll get neither. When you give up uh, liberty, uh, you get uh, tyranny. But I wanted to show you this graph. Um, USA Today had a vote. Do you agree with the NFL's head-to-toe pat-down, the groping of your wife's breast, the grabbing of your genitals? And if you add up the numbers, only 11% agreed uh, with the TSA police state uh, groping. 4% said, don't tase me, bro. 48% um, said this is an invasion of privacy, and 37% said they would just stay home. So if you average that together, 85% are against it. And we find that 85% want to abolish the private Federal Reserve. We find that over 85% write at about 90 uh, don't believe the official JFK story. Over and over again, Angus and Reid New York Times poll five years ago, 83% believe the government's covering up the truth of 9-11. In every poll, I don't believe just one poll or two polls or five polls or 100 polls. In thousands of polls that we track day to day, week to week, year to year, in thousands of polls, over 80% of the population, well, hell, Congress has a 9% approval rating. That's 91% don't agree with the system. But in thousands of polls, above 80%, don't buy a damn thing, they're told, by this pack of known liars. And that's the good news. The awakening has happened, but people just don't have confidence in themselves yet. They don't feel like they're the majority. They don't feel like they're in the right. They feel like they're in the minority, which isn't true. But a minority who's in the right is the majority, as Barry Goldwater said. He also said that when you're talking about fighting tyranny, silence isn't golden, it's yellow. And with that, 
I want to go to this report filed by Infowars.com reporters on the NFL grope downs taking place. And then coming up, Sherry Tenpenny, the doctor, I'm breaking down what's happening uh, with the uh, vaccine carnage. And then we will also get to Ed Asner. Stay with us uh, after we talk to Darren McBreen. Darren McBreen, tell us what's happening. Thank you, Alex. Recently, Homeland Security announced that they will extend their Stasi-style grope downs on innocent law-abiding American citizens who simply want to watch a football game. Now, we're here at DKR Stadium in the heart of Austin, Texas, to ask football fans how they feel about the new Homeland Security pat-downs. Having people pat down before they come in, I don't, I don't think that would... Like the cost and benefit doesn't make sense. If they have to wait in this big crowd and big lines and then still get checked just to go in to see like their favorite players, it might create some personal problems. I feel like people are always going to find a way if they want to do bad things. If someone really wants to do something, most likely they're going to do it and they're going to find a way to sneak it through. But the more, the more roadblocks you put up there, I guess the harder it's going to be, the more you might deter somebody from trying. Really, I think it's kind of going overboard. I'm not really for it. I don't think that it really will get anything accomplished. You know, you had the guy who tased the individual, and that situation was, it was big, and I don't want to get tased, so in a way, it's, hey, that's security. Uh, it's what needs to happen. But in another way, it's really intrusive. Having Homeland Security at the entrance of the gates could potentially make it safer, but I also feel like it's a violation of privacy. Last Friday, Alex Jones called for a boycott of the NFL in his attempt to prevent America from continuing down its path to becoming a nightmare police state. Don't be part of this ritual of corruption. Boycott it, and even if you don't go to NFL games, talk about boycotting it. This USA Today poll on September 16th clearly demonstrates that most Americans disagree with these aggressive procedures. But the federal government and Homeland Security don't care. Even though it's a clear violation of our constitutionally guaranteed Fourth Amendment rights, they're moving forward with their plans. You know, a lot of privacy advocates are in an outrage as far as, and this goes with the TSA and airports as well, about children that are being subjected to the same pat-downs. And where do you draw the line and what's your feelings about, you know, taking your kids to a football game and they have to be patted down as well? I can understand the reasoning for doing that, just because um, terrorist attacks can come through any ways and they would do anything just to get whatever accomplished, but I think that at football games, doing that to children is just is, is a little bit over the line. I don't think children need to be pat down. It would be an arbitrary age around 13, I think would be acceptable. Underneath that age, I think you should give children their space. Yeah, if you've got kids with you especially, you know, you bring your son, your daughter, I don't know, it's a nice feeling that, okay, we, we a little bit of a hassle, slowed the line down, but I feel safe. Yeah, I, I would hope that, you know, uh, reasonable minds pr would prevail, and they would just say, you know, an eight-year-old kid is not going to be carrying a bomb of some sort. I would hope it doesn't get that far. If I have something where I don't feel like I should be touched or I had a situation where I've been touched before and I didn't appreciate that one. I'm clearly not going to appreciate somebody who feels like they deserve to have to do it for security reasons. Like that's not a good reason to be that intrusive to my body. The unholy alliance between the NFL and the federal government is merely the next stop on the road to transforming America into one giant prison camp. A tremendous price to pay. And as you could see, most people don't feel it makes them any safer. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. Alex, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Uh, did you hear the one guy? It's a nice feeling. Yeah, it's a great feeling uh, to watch uh, men and women grab your three-year-old daughter and actually check their crotch. No, that's a horrible feeling. You'll basically let these people violate your basic rights. Now, I want to hit some interesting science news before I get into the really hardcore news here tonight. And that's that the speed of light has been broken by scientists. It is the most famous scientific equation of all time. And all but last night, it emerged that Einstein's theory of relativity may be wrong. And it goes on to say that scientists at CERN claim that they have measured particles faster than light. Think about that. Uh, I have no doubt that there are particles faster than light. I mean, hell, 60-something years ago, they were telling the public that 
the speed of sound couldn't be broken. But CERN refused to release documents, but they got leaked, proving that global warming was not man-made and that it was mainly solar radiation. Duh, the sun heating the earth. I don't need scientists to tell me that common sense. So unfortunately, I can't believe a word that comes out of CERN. Uh, but uh, no doubt, you know, just because Einstein tells us nothing's faster than light, give me a break. Every scientist that comes along knows it all. So I thought we would uh, cover that information. Very, very interesting. I love to believe CERN, but these are the same folks that tell me that Al Gore is the second coming of Christ. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to uh, buy into that right now. Now, getting back into uh, some other important news here today. Mr. Cameron, the Prime Minister of England, who loves puppies, so war is okay, has gone to the United Nations. The UN agrees. The new model of global corporate colonialism is to use what Western nations' money and, 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 and blood to empower their corporate takeover of the world, and all they've got to do is go fund in Syria uh, or in Libya or in Egypt or anywhere else, or the Ivory Coast, for that matter, of Africa, to fund rebels who go around murdering and killing people and then have the UN invade in the name of defending the rebels. But I saw another headline today in the London Telegraph about NATO is stationing drones all over North Africa, including Libya, to bomb other countries to fight Al-Qaeda. But it's admitted that Al-Qaeda was the rebel group the British, French, and NATO put in who've been given control of Tripoli and now the rest of the country, and the fighting is still going on with Gaddafi forces, but they told us a month ago the fighting was over, so it must be true. Again, this is this Orwellian minefield of different conflicting lies, and as a good little globalist, I guess we're all supposed to just buy into all these contradictions uh, of logic, but I'm sorry I can't do it. Now, getting into another article here, uh, Patrick Henningsen wrote another story about this for Infowars.com, and he links to statements by the Iraqi government here. Now the U.S. puppet regime in Iraq is calling for a regime change in Syria. I'm no fan of Assad and what's happening in Syria, but this is now six months of the West trying to fund al-Qaeda groups to overthrow the secular government there. So there is literally no end to this. And, and, and why shouldn't the big multinational corporations that want the oil and want the drug routes and want the rebuilding contracts to rebuild the country, why shouldn't they use American and British and European tax money to do this? Again, all this is done in our name. We get the political blame for it. We pay for it. And then the bankers just sit up there and laugh at us. What an incredible fraud. Uh, think about that. The UN is completely morally bankrupt. 100%. They now back invasions of countries when Western governments foment rebel forces to try to take it over. That's the excuse for air bombardments and ground forces. And then we're told this isn't war because a Nobel Peace Prize winner is leading it. Truly, we've reached the Orwellian maxim of war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. All right, I want to get to this piece um, before we get to this Ed Asner interview and then come back with Dr. Sherry Tenpenny for a full in-depth interview with some breaking news. I was aware of this from reading government documents, and I, I, I put the research in the film Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement, which I believe is my greatest work to date in 16-plus years of research and journalism and activism and commentary. I was aware of this from mentions in memoirs and government documents, but never the full image. The Daily Mail reports on recently declassified documents. But first, I'm going to play a clip from Endgame here in a moment, where what was known as the Red Empire or the British Empire, that was the dominant force in the 1930s in the world, that the U.S. government at certain levels, including the Army and Department of War, they weren't as Orwellian then. They called it a Department of War, not a Department of of defense. <laughs> they wanted to attack England and all of England's possessions around the world in Africa, the Pacific, South America, you name it. We're talking about the Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands. They wanted to go in and just nerve gas all the Brits. Our government realized that, hey, this is the empire. We want to become the new empire. The people that 
that run our government to show you the, the elitist mindset. And they said, we want to just go ahead and attack. Uh, here it is, war on the Red Empire, how America planned to attack on Britain in 1930s with bombing raids and chemical weapons. Details of an amazing American military plan for an attack to wipe out a major part of the British Army are today revealed for the first time. And it uh, reports in the early 1930s, this was proposed and was the battle plan until Roosevelt came to power in 1933 and then made a deal with the British. And that's exactly what I've gleaned from deep historical research, that the Bushes, the Rockefellers, they're all on record funding Hitler. And, and, and Smedley Butler, two-time Congressional Medal of Honor winner, uh, he was in line to be the Commandant of the Marine Corps. The fascists came to him and said, you've overthrown all these countries, Guatemala. The, he overthrew him in more than 15 countries himself. They came to him and they said, we want to overthrow America. You'll be the dictator. You're going to link up with Hitler. He really likes you. And Butler said, I'm not going to do that. And went on record, we're going to play a newsreel clip of that. And then they had the McCormick Dickstein Committee hearings. All this came out. The Bushes were about to be arrested at the start of uh, World War II. So they started the... Uh, the uh, different systems where they had Hollywood folks go, you know, give speeches and play music for the troops so that they would be seen as patriotic. But they were the main uh, agents, along with the Brothmans uh, and uh, others uh, in North America. Uh, just just uh, absolutely, absolutely incredible, incredible information. And so, as I pointed out in Endgame, America made a decision to go with the Thabian Socialist. And even though Churchill claimed he was anti-socialist, he was really backed by the Fabian Socialist. And so this deal was made. And the King of England, Edward VIII, had to advocate. He had to step down. He was in Germany when World War II started. He had to step down as the King of England because he'd supported Hitler. Of course, he was a German prince, so why wouldn't he? So this is just the incredible information. That, that right before this happened, the United States was going to actually attack England and all of its possessions and take over the British Empire. Instead, the two merged, and America became the British Empire, and that's the New World Order. But it wasn't that they were anti-Hitler because they were anti-extermination and world government. It was that they wanted to run it and run it covertly through the vaccines and other globalist programs, as is reported in the 1948 uh, British... Uh, report on population. All right, let's go ahead and go to that clip from Endgame. Congressional Medal of Honor winner Major General Smedley Butler went public in 1934 exposing an attempt by the robber barons to launch a military overthrow of the United States. The war hero testified to the McCormick Dickstein Committee in Congress that some of the most powerful men in America had tried to recruit him to lead a military coup so they could set up national socialism in the United States. I appeared before the Congressional Committee, the highest representation of the American people under subpoena to tell what I knew of activities, which I believe might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. I was supposed to lead an organization of 500,000 men, which would be able to take over the functions of government. The fascist had also made deep inroads in England. And then I go through all that evidence. Um, this film has been out now for four years. And it was Brown Brother Harriman that were the main drivers. It was the Harrimans that were the main drivers, along with other elitist families, uh, in all of this, including the Rothschilds. You'd think, why would the Rothschilds be funding Hitler and the British? That's how you take over. It's called full-spectrum dominance. You fund both sides and let them kill each other and go into debt. So you're thinking black, white, uh, up, down. You're thinking pro-Islam, anti-Islam. No, no, no. It's the clash of civilizations. It's the playing people off against each other. That's what this is really all about. And what an incredible report that's now come out, and it just verifies our deep research into these matters. This is the type of information you get with InfoWars Nightly News. A group of people dedicated to reality, not to fake left-right paradigms, scoring points and bashing Democrats, or scoring points and bashing Republicans, and being part of some gang psychology. We are part of the reality movement. We are all about real information. 
Now, I want to play a clip from a couple days ago because it's very newsworthy of the former head of the Screen Actors Guild, award-winning actor, a TV, film, you name it, Ed Asner, breaking down Building 7, the key smoking gun of the controlled demolition of 9-11. Then we're going to come back with a conclusion, an in-depth report with Dr. Sherry Tenpenny on Big Pharma's desperate move. It's fleeing forward for forced inoculation. Stay with us. It's InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, what do you think the biggest smoking gun of 9-11 uh, is? Well, Building 7. Building 7 being brought down without having been damaged to that extent. I think that they want to make sure nobody, uh, no, nobody shoots their mouth off. And if eventually they do, then they'll probably end up dead. They made the Japanese Prime Minister resign. Uh, the heads of Tokyo Electric heads rolled in uh, Japan. Some people committed suicide over it. Yeah. But, but here they got promoted for standing down, Ed. You know, the, the amazing thing about 9-11 about in its totality is that this greatest country in the world with the greatest, strongest defense in the world had this horrendous obscenity done to them on 9-11. Uh, so we, we supposedly had gatekeepers, watchmen, protecting us. Why has not one single person been punished? Unless we bomb the, the city, we can't save it. So we, we've got to level, bring down to a level of, of clear understanding and begin again. And I don't know how much destruction that entails, but we need a change in this country. What's your view on the JFK assassination? Well, I, I think that there probably was some government complicity there. So Mark Lane uh, defended Willis Carto. And he won because he was able to prove that E. Howard Hunt, uh, and I imagine other, uh, he was able to prove also that other CIA gentlemen were all over the area at the uh, JFK assassination. The American dream. There's a reason they call it a dream. <laughs> Cock-a-doodle-doo, pal. No, 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 no! I don't have any more money! My job sucks right now, please! I'll have more money next month! You can't take my house! Is that your signature? It is a private bank owned by private stockholders. A, -a, -a private bank? Do not let the name Federal fool you. If I got this money from the bank, and the bank got it from the Federal Reserve dump trucks. Where does the Federal Reserve get their money? They take our property away, just like Thomas Jefferson said they would. Those sons of bitches! It's the greatest theft in human history. Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Alex Jones. And all week, we've been focusing in on vaccines because all over the United States, but also in other parts of the world, like Mexico, governments are now moving towards forced inoculation of children without parental consent. That bill has now passed the House and Senate in California and is on Governor Brown's desk. So I wanted to go back and look at some of the uh, big stories we've seen the last few years concerning vaccines, the H1N1 for flu, uh, Gardasil now being a big national story, with Rick Perry being attacked by all the other Republican candidates, uh, saying that he was wrong to have attempted that. This is a big breakthrough, uh, really showing that Americans and people all over the world are starting to wake up to the fraud, to the danger, to the carnage that is Big Pharma and the vaccine industry. So they're striking back boldly 
and launching all sorts of hoaxes, saying nobody's been hurt by Gardasil, despite the fact that the CDC's own adverse reaction report says 18 to 20 plus thousand, depending on what report you look at, uh, despite the fact that it's well known Gardasil has resulted in deaths. And joining us to talk about this is author, filmmaker, medical doctor, Sherry Tenpenny. Her new DVD film is out, Flu and Flu Vaccines, What's Coming Through the Needle. By the way, it's available at InfoWars.com if you'd like to support uh, our work that we're doing here. I wanted to talk to Dr. Sherry Tenpenny because she's probably the most respected and well-known medical doctor out there uh, breaking down exactly what's happening uh, with these uh, vaccines that are being pushed on us. And she was absolutely accurate when it came to breaking down the carnage that was going to be caused by the H1N1 shot for the flu back in 2009. Doc, it's great to have you here with us tonight. Thank you so much, Alex. Thanks for asking me. Where do you want to start first? Uh, the new contaminants in the Gardasil, the move for forced inoculations without parental consent, or the fact that in 2009, in hindsight, we learned that you were absolutely on target with what that was going to do? Well, it's all in the news, isn't it? And it's one thing after another these days because what you said was exactly right. There are millions and millions of people that are now waking up and looking around. And every single time one of these events happen, whether it was bird flu in 2005, whether it was swine flu in 2009, and then the H1N1, all the difficulties that we had when we saw the H1N1 given to young children and also to pregnant, to pregnant women. And now we've got this whole thing with Gardasil and showing that we've got a biohazard contaminant that's been documented that from samples that have been tested from five countries in several different states and the FDA says that this recombinant HPV which has been bound to aluminum so we know that this was actively engaged has, is a biohazard and so it's it seems like every single time that something like this comes up many millions more parents wake up start looking around and saying what I should start questioning vaccines and they start with something very simple like maybe reading a package insert they start from there and say if I, if I can't pronounce it. I don't know what it is. I don't want it injected into me or my children. Well, if you read the package inserts for H1N1, regular flu shot, and others, it says neurological disorders, cancer, brain damage, convulsions. Uh, but then you turn on the news and they've got vaccine company spokespeople not telling you that they work for them or on their payroll saying no one's ever been hurt by a vaccine. Uh, are, are we seeing more and more desperate lying because they're scared? I, I believe that's true. And every time I hear Dr. Nancy Snyderman on the news talking about how safe and effective vaccines are, trying to assure all of the, the uh, scared little parents out there, I just, and what she's been saying has been absolutely false. She's actually been giving bad and wrong information. And instead of promoting the Gardasil vaccine for young girls, because now we're trying to give it to young girls and boys starting at nine years of age, the clinical trials were actually done on 16 to 24 year olds, not on little girls. We have no idea how long this is going to last. We know there's a hundred different HPV strains, 15 of which have been associated with cancer. The vaccine only covers two, and we have no idea of whether this vaccine is going to have any impact on cervical cancer at all when these girls get to be 30 to 40 years of age. What she should be, what Dr. Nancy Schneiderman should be promoting, is that young girls um, need to be getting regular pap smears, and that that has been shown forever to be the most effective way and the most cost-effective way of preventing cervical cancer for the long run well without getting too graphic i'm no doctor but i went and and and, and read the insert when they, when the gardasil first came out and it said um, you know there on the insert this is not even proven to actually protect you from the cancer and then e even in the trials we saw the autoimmune problems the convulsions the bleeding uh people becoming paralyzed and then lo and behold now there's uh, scientists just in the news a few days ago were saying this DNA, uh, the virus more whole than we first thought, bound to the aluminum, uh, this is the exact type of thing that would cause an autoimmune disease like lupus. And, and I heard you hinting at the fact that it had been actively bound. Uh, I know they looked at multiple sub-manufacturers of this Gardasil and found this had accidentally happened, just like the UN accidentally with the tetanus shot had female hormone bound to it. Uh, to cause miscarriages in women. Uh, Doc, do you think this is being done on purpose and this vaccine could have some other use in it than we're being told? 
Well, certainly. I mean, it, cer it certainly could, Alex, because the, one of the other ingredients in the Gardasil vaccine is polysorbate 80. Polysorbate 80 is a preservative that they use in things like ice cream as a stabilizer, and it has been shown in, to cause infertility in female mice, and it causes testicular atrophy in male mice. And this has been this is in the in the in the medical literature. People aren't making this up. And they also know that repeated doses of polysorbate 80 can lead to anaphylactic shock. Polysorbate 80 is also in the DTP vaccine, the DTAP, which they are now pushing on pregnant women for them to get the DTAP vaccine. So it's it's endless. And when you, I want to go back and address what you said about are they pushing back very strongly? Of course they are, because the um, you cannot make a living, you cannot make an 800 billion dollar a year industry on the backs of unvaccinated healthy children. Most children who are unvaccinated are rarely sick. They may get the occasional cold or flu or a little bit of a fever, but it comes and goes. And so they are not chronically lifetime ill. Well, it's like I the just, Amish. Uh, the, the, the epidemic of autism is unknown in their population. It, that's correct. And it's and in many other populations. I mean, what we've been pushing for, you and I and all of us who are big vaccine advocates, what we've been pushing for for decade more, now, more than a decade, is for the CDC to finally do the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated study. Um, it seems as though at some point we're going to have to just raise the money and do it ourselves because the CDC doesn't want to know the answer. They don't want to see a whole bunch of unvaccinated kids who never miss school, are on no chronic daily medications, who are doing extraordinarily well, never get sick. They do not want to stand that up against a bunch of vaccinated kids who are on a whole bunch of medications and have a life, life, a lifetime worth of injuries. Well, doctor, what you pointed out back in 2009, out of the gates, you said, look, from previous studies, we know that when you take this H1N1 flu shot or one that's similar, it's going to reduce your regular immunity to, to regular flu. And then they had the big Canadian mainline study that showed, what was it, a, a doubling in your chances of getting regular seasonal flu if you took the H1N1. And then I remember it was you and others that discovered that they were admitting that they might have had a plan previously to put simulants in the previous year's uh, vaccine. And there's a lot of evidence they were actually triggering this H1N1 program. Uh, can you speak to that? Yeah, I can, Alex. And it's also the, the fact that, that uh, it does lower the immune system and you can get the flu shot and still get sick. I've looked back and I talk about this in the flu DVD that you, that is now available through InfoWars, is that I've looked all of, at the data from the CDC over the last 11 years. And every year there are testing sites where they take nasal swabs and they send them to the CDC and they say, okay, you've got all these flu-like symptoms. What is causing you to be sick? Is it influenza or is it some other, uh, is it some other bug? Because the CDC says that the reason you have to get annual flu shots is because the, the antibodies wear off and you have to have an exact match. The one that's in the flu shot has to match the one that's in circulation in order to keep you from getting sick. The exact, those, the amount of, of people who, were, who actually get sick from the flu, that it matches what's in the flu shot over the last 11 years has been less than 13%. So if the flu shot works at all, which I don't think that it does, in fact, I know it doesn't, it will only match 13% of the time. So you take on all the risk of the flu, all the, I have the flu shot, all of its ingredients, the fact you can get Guillain-Barre, you can have all sorts of immunosuppressive types of things that can happen from a flu shot, and you can still get the flu anyways. It's absolutely not worth it. And the multi-dose flu shots that they start giving at children from six months of age, the multi-dose flu shots still have mercury in them. Wow. And, and while you're talking, we're playing some video over it of your documentary presentation, flu and flu vaccines, what's coming through the needle. I want to talk to you before we end this discussion about that. But uh, Dr. Tenpenny, we've discovered Rockefeller Foundation documents. Perhaps we'll put some up while you're speaking from 1966, 68, saying we need to develop sterilants hidden in vaccines. So basically piggybacking or Trojan horsing. Then we have the report from 85 where they say this is wonderful. We've actually discovered it. We're going into the implementation phase. And then as you know, the UN got caught in the mid 90s in Africa and Asia, uh, India and places with the tetanus shots that really had a sterilant in them. Um, well, not really even a sterilant. It, 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 it caused women to have uh, violent uh, uh, miscarriages in the second second trimester. I um, mean, I know you're a doctor, you just focus on the effects of these, but 
in the final equation, they know what they're doing. And this is more than just profit making. Uh, this is really a medical tyranny from my research. And, and, and I think that's really evidenced uh, by the fact that they, on national news over the weekend, put front men for Merck up on all the major news shows. It was bombarding uh, the, the population, saying not one person's been hurt by Gardasil and issuing a fake $10,000 challenge at Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, uh, who followed Ron Paul's lead and you know, raised the issue to Rick Perry. I mean, that's amazing because all we did was go to the CDC's own report and we had a press release from, from a few months ago. It was 17,000. I was corrected yesterday. It's actually 22,000 now. It's grown in just a few months. And they admitted deaths, Guillain-Barre, all on their own paperwork, which we'll show again in a moment. We just showed the Rockefeller Foundation documents. Uh, I mean, this is bold hoaxing. And, 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 and so clearly they know what they're doing. How I always try to explain that to people, Alex, that maybe can't get their head around that, is I always refer to Enron and Arthur Anderson. I mean, who would have ever thought one of the big eight accounting firms would have just completely imploded and gone away? Who would have ever thought that one of the top, like, uh, Fortune 200 companies in this country would have just blown up and gone away, who had tens of thousands of employees? It was the eight or ten rotten apples at the top that knew all along. And I believe, I, it's my personal belief that that's the way it is inside of the vaccine industry and the big when you get big food, big farm, and big oil together that control and own everything, they don't like the population to be where it is. Um, I think that there, there are some issues with that. I also truly believe that the vaccine industry is the bedrock of the entire pharmaceutical industry, the bedrock. That is why they are fighting this so hard. Because if you took out all of those vaccines, which, by the way, there are 330 vaccines in development right now, 96 about to be approved, targeted towards adolescents and adults. So if parents think that who are listening to this say, well, my kids are all grown up, I don't have to worry about that anymore, guess again, they're coming after you. And Did you see they, the doctor on the news this weekend, one of their uh, pushers? I forget his name, we've got it in the clips, we played it earlier in the week. He said, you could give a baby 10,000 vaccines at once. Yeah, that was Paul Offit, who's, that was a paper that came out in 2003, and I, and I actually wrote a rebuttal to that back in 2003, where he said that you could take 10,000 vaccine antigens all at the same time, and it's like, okay, Paul Offit, roll up your sleeve. Just let's do it to you let's see, and see what happens to your health. But isn't this going to destroy them in the end when it gets so obvious we're now 1 in 36 in South Korea have autism, where you go to a movie theater and maybe 20% of the kids in there are, are you know, I mean, behaving like zombies? I mean, clearly this is an environmental situation. They can't cover it up forever. And as you just alluded to, they have hundreds of vaccines coming down the pipeline that they want to get government to mandate we take. And as I know you said two years ago, over and over again, you said, Alex, people are waking up. They used to just sell this through soft power uh, and uh, trick everybody. Uh, you said they're going to try to force it. And that brings me to one of the final points. As you know, the bill has passed the House and Senate in California, most populous state. 36 million people or whatever it is, 37 million. It's gone to Brown's desk. He's saying he's going to sign it to inject the kids without parental consent. I mean, my God. I want to know where the liability in that is going to be. If, if, if a 12-year-old if a, if a girl who's in her little girl clatch and they all decide they're going to get the Gardasil vaccine together and one of them dies... Where is the liability in that going to be? Is it going to be with the school nurse, with the school district, with, with the governor? Where is the liability going to lie in that? Um, because if they've passed a law saying that these young girls can, can, um, and boys can make a decision for their own on vaccines, are they going to say that girls, they can make a decision of their own on some other drug like Ritalin or, or any, any other type of pharmaceutical psychotropic drug? And where is the, where's the liability going to lie? I don't think anybody has addressed that because someone in as large as that state is, we know for sure, as you've already said, there are at least 23,000 VAERS reports that could represent as little as one percent of the actual number of, of reported injuries out there. We know that there's at least 32 confirmed deaths and a hundred other deaths that they are now that are, they are investigating with the Gardasil vaccine. What's going to happen if some of these girls walk into the school nurses area and they get a vaccine and they fall on the floor and have a seizure and die? Who's responsible? Nobody's talking about. By the that. way, uh, th that's another point I've made on the radio and play clip after clip. If you just type "girl died after Gardasil." You get the U.S., you get Canada, you get England, you get Indian newscast, where 
they inject them in the classrooms and they some and, and girls collapse have convulsions and some cases die of shock within minutes i mean this is incredible how are they how Th th that's my question. Wh how are they so bold? How are they so wild? I mean, how are they just so so brazen when they knew it was killing people in the trials and they still went ahead and had Perry lie and say it was the law? Well, he got caught. It wasn't the law. And so now they've just moved to go ahead and have a law. Alex, think about this for a minute. If you took your two-year-old, your two-year-old child, and you uh, four-postered them on your dining room table, you had four adults hold them down on the table, and you took needle syringes, you took four needles and jabbed them into their thighs, and you injected chemicals, aluminum, formaldehyde, animal cells, human DNA into their legs, and then you went and told your neighbor, and you left the, that child to cry and scream hysterically for hours, and then you told your neighbor, well, yeah, we were just doing a little procedure. How soon would CPS show up at your door and take those kids away? But because it's done in a doctor's office, because somebody has on a white coat and somebody trusts you, we think that this is okay, it's harmless, and it's done if, because it's good for you, it's torture. <laughs> it should not be allowed to be happening anywhere, let alone in a school system where some adolescent gets to make a decision about what's injected in their body. It's a travesty. It really is. Well, I know this. I was a tough kid, and I'd play around in construction zones and have nails go through my foot and you know, break arms and you know, break fingers and was tough and didn't care and wasn't afraid of anything. But I was horrified of shots and would beg and would plead. <laughs> and, and I only had a few vaccines in my life. And now I've, it's, it's, it's more than 50 I know they give children. Now they want it to be hundreds and they're setting the precedent to try to give them thousands. Uh, this is just incredible. Now I want to close, uh, doctor, with their ace in the hole. You raised this when I was talking to you during the break before we went live here. And you said their ace in the hole uh, is things like contagion with Matt Damon and all this. There are so many TV shows, movies about mega death, billions dead, not a question of if but when. You've got to get the shot. Uh, and, and when you learn that this vaccine industry is a $100 billion industry a year or more, you really see that this is product placement, propaganda placement, and that that's the race in the hole is just scaring the daylights out of people. Absolutely. And the, the vision statement of the pharmaceutical industry, which I learned this from a pharmaceutical insider, said that the vision statement of the entire industry is to have every single human on the planet on a minimum of two daily pharmaceutical drugs for their entire life. Well, how better to do that than to start with young children and making them terribly sick and have all sorts of things from asthma, allergies, eczema, ADD, ADHD that you can't really connect. Somebody told me that there was a line from that movie Contagion that said, you know, we need to make this vaccine because of 10 years from now, um, we, it's causing autism. Nobody will be able to connect the dots. And that's exactly what they're setting up. They want everybody sick because that promotes their widgets. It certainly does, and then they have the treatments in development for things that they know in the trials with lab animals it's going to cause in Homo sapien, sapien the diabolical nature, the, the, the weaponization of this. I, I know you've done deep research, but in my film Endgame and just through pure, pure research trying to discover what the globalists, the Rockefellers, stood for, the Rockefellers, the British royalty, the King of England had to advocate over it, funded Hitler and wanted worldwide eugenics. And it was a medical tyranny that the Nazis first engaged in. Forced inoculation, all of it. And that's basically now what's come here. It's just an underground program, and that's why Bayer Pharmaceutical and others that came out in court and knowingly shipped out HIV blood. And hey, it's get rid of the hemophiliacs. We're doing you a favor. This is a cold-blooded group. It's, it, it, from my research, it's much bigger than profit. Have uh, you found the eugenics angle in your research? I have, and I think that it's, uh, you know, what a lot of people say, and I would have to agree, that when you know, World War II was over, everybody just traded in their uniforms for white coats and, and, uh, and business suits. We'd, nothing changed. It was life. Things just went on as, as usual. And I do believe that there is definitely a sinister side. And the problem that bothers me the most, Alex, is what's wrong with the, with the 800,000 physicians in this country, that they just march to the tomb of the drug companies, that they're not willing to look at any of this information or very little of it. They're not, they don't know what's coming through that needle and being injected into adults and children. And they just absolutely stand by it and take people like me and you and other people who are exposing the truth and tell... And, uh, 
colleagues and other physicians say you're just you're just you're just saying all the wrong things it's just really not well, I'll true. tell you why I mean you're a doctor but correct me if I'm wrong but I've got family that are physicians look they are brought up that you're part of the elite now you know best and then they're kept so busy that they just receive what the American Medical Association says and they follow it and they've been following the system so long they don't want to admit they were conned and were wrong and so they're now committed to it and that's basically how tyrannies work at once a tyrant or once a corrupt system gets you to join it then you will rationalize greater and greater crimes uh, well stated I'm sure that's true but but we are seeing more and more medical doctors come out it, not nearly enough I mean really we even even physicians who do integrative medicine like I do here in Cleveland Ohio I mean even the even doctors like that that have a, a practice of holistic medicine they still are you know sort of a supporter of vaccinations I mean they really are they have really an issue with that well I mean I want to be clear certainly from the medical history in the 400 years of vaccination you can't get some immunity from having some something attenuated or weakened but then there's the whole issue of then what does that do to the rest of your immune system but now I think they deceive us by even calling these vaccines these are more uh, nanotech uh, re-engineered viruses I mean, now they've got the new classes coming out that re-engineer the brain and attack neurons that would uptake uh, endorphins uh, uh, that you know uh, the fun vax <laughs> exactly they're saying no don't be depressed anymore I mean this is this is really Buck Rogers type re-engineering of society and they just call it vaccines and they think well this is like the polio vaccine we're saving people yeah saving them with hundreds of millions exposed to cancer viruses well think about all of these girls that we were talking about just a few minutes ago that would get these injections of Gardasil and, and it, it could be any of the there's now kids now get six 40 doses of 16 different vaccines by the time they start kindergarten and one of the things that people have to realize when they're listening to this and it's school season school just started and across the country they've been telling people that parents no sh no shots no school well my answer to that is no shots no school not true every state except West of West Virginia and Mississippi have, an, a, have either a philosophical exemption or a medical exemption for you to opt out of your children being inoculated with all of these things. So there, there are a lot of ways that you could stop it, but every one of these vaccines all have horrible potential side effects. There is nothing that can come through a needle and to try to keep you healthy that, um, that you can't do for yourself just by your own diet, exercise, vitamin well, D, vitamin C, and all those things. Well, Doc, that's another example of the hoax. Exactly. They continue exactly to say right. it's the law, you've got to take it, and that's what's so wonderful about Perry being caught. We called him, it came out he didn't have the authority, it wasn't the law, and now he has to apologize and all the other candidates are against him. That has certainly gotten the, uh, the death merchants of the vaccine makers on the defensive like I've never seen them before. And uh, now, now, what about the other two states? There are still ways to get exemptions there, correct? Well, West Virginia and Mississippi really only have a medical exemption, and it's very hard to get. Their state health departments are very adamant about it. In fact, I've even had some parents in Mississippi tell me that the state health department wants them to vaccinate their kids even if they're homeschooling. And so those two states are the only two states that just have a, a, a medical exemption. Most of the time, you can only get that for a particular vaccine for which you've had a reaction. I mean, even if you have an ill child and you say, I don't want them to have the vaccines, the medical doctors, who again, or the problems will say oh well it's because your child is sick they need the vaccines more than ever because you don't want them to get those vaccine preventable diseases well as a medical doctor you know until two years ago they said never vaccinate a pregnant woman now they're saying it's good Oh, not only are they saying that it's good, Alex, they're talking about flu shots, pertussis vaccines, they're talking about hepatitis B, and they're even potentially talking about giving Gardasil vaccines to pregnant women. Well, well, Dr. Tenpenny, we're going to have to have you back up in the near future to get into all the other attacks that are happening. But the good news is, and, and I think you've basically agreed with me today, the report is the worm is starting to turn, the pendulum is starting to swing, the awakening is here. I believe that's true. I really do. I think that it's really, you know, when I started this 11 years ago, there, there were just a few of us, you know, out in the lone, just really talking about this. I truly believe that tens of millions of people, not only in this country, but around the world, are waking up and they're just saying no. What are the best websites for people to visit to see all the scientific documentation that you've amassed? 
Um, going to drtenpenny.com, D-R-T-E-N-P-E-N-N-Y, drtenpenny.com. Dr. Tenpenny, that's where um, we're uh, soon to be uh, launching an entire library of all the research that I put together through drtenpenny.com. My clinic in Cleveland is Tenpenny IMC, like Iris Mary Charlie. That's Tenpenny Integrated Medical Center, tenpennyimc.com. We're here in Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm always proud to say that people have come from 39 states and 12 countries to get well and off their drugs. Well, if I ever need your help, I'm definitely coming to you. You are certainly a guardian angel out there. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank you so much, Alex. Wow, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. Please support the important work she's doing against the eugenicists and against their soft kill program. And please get the DVD presentation, Flu and Flu Vaccines, What's Coming Through the Needle. I know that you know about a lot of this stuff, but your friends, your family, your neighbors don't. If we simply get this type of information and get it out to everybody you know, we can stop these people. It's available discounted at InfoWars.com and your purchase supports InfoWars Nightly News as well. So does your subscription to InfoWars Nightly News. You know, we allow members to share their passcode uh, to a limited number of people. And if we had enough support, we would expand it basically to an unlimited point. But it's funny, people almost don't appreciate something that's completely free. But it is your subscriptions at PrisonPlanet.tv that have made this transmission possible. So I don't want you to be behind me. I want you right beside me. Make no mistake, those of you that are members of PrisonPlanet.tv, you are making all of this possible. So thank you so much for being part of the second American revolution, a revolution against tyranny worldwide, what I call 1776 worldwide. Now, I want to make an announcement here at the end of the show. I have just dispatched, they're in the air now, uh, Aaron Dykes and Darren McBreen to Denver, Colorado, we just learned about it today. It turns out it's been announced weeks ago. A huge urban warfare martial law takeover drill in Denver, Colorado. And they're going to be reporting for us tomorrow here on the show and on the radio tomorrow uh, on this Mountain Guardian martial law takeover drill that's taking place with the Army and a lot more there at NORTHCOM. So be sure and join us tomorrow as well. I'm Alex Jones signing off for the InfoWars crew. Thank you for watching.